the P0641 code. It's a, it's a very difficult code to diagnose. Uh, so I'm going to do my best here to show you exactly how to go about troubleshooting it and possibly fixing it so you can save yourself some money. So first off, the first thing I want to show you is this nifty little app I got on my phone. Uh, it's called Torque. You can get it, uh, Android at least I know has it in the uh, Google Play Store. I'm not sure about iOS or anything. The Torque app connects to this uh, OBD thing via Bluetooth. And uh, it's nice, you can just kind of keep that in there the entire time and monitor your engine performance and everything via the app on your phone. Uh, that OBD thing costs about 25 bucks or so. And it's not going to give you the uh, like the ABS codes and stuff like that, but it's going to give you everything you can get at AutoZone uh, without having to go to AutoZone. If you're having a lot of problems like we are with this car, uh, throwing this 641 code, it may be worth it so you don't have to keep going to AutoZone to find out what code is being thrown. But this is a little interesting app here. You can see it says uh, OBD check. You just tap on that and it brings it up. And uh, welcome to Torque. You can see that, then you can just hit the little gear button, go to fault codes. You can show logged fault codes and you can clear the fault codes, which is uh, also very helpful. So you tap that, so now it's connecting with that Bluetooth thing plugged into the car. 641, you can tap right on the 641. You can see it says unknown error, more information may be available from the web, and then you tap the web and it opens up a browser for you. So you can see it says sensor reference voltage A circuit open. And that's basically it. The other code was for the camshaft sensor which is also on my reference voltage A circuit. Uh, for that you need to get your uh, wiring diagram for your particular car. It's going to be different for all cars. For my car the camshaft sensor just happens to be on circuit A. So let's go to the engine and take a look. So this is a 2007 Chevy Equinox. Uh, we're getting that 0641 code, uh, which is an open reference circuit on uh, reference 1. You have to find online your wiring diagram or get one of the Haynes books or something like that and find your reference circuit and what sensors are on that circuit. Then you got to go through and check all those sensors. I know for, my, for this particular vehicle, the EGR valve as well as this sensor, uh, the map sensor, the camshaft sensor, which is back down in here, uh, they're all on the, uh, the same circuit, reference circuit. Why do we have reference circuits? Well, if you're measuring something, you need something to reference off, off of. If you're measuring how tall you are, you're referencing from the ground. If you're measuring how far you've traveled, you're measuring from where you start. So as long as, uh, that stays constant as long as the ground's not moving up and down your start position isn't moving you can always measure how far you've gone or how tall you've gotten based on that solid reference point so the sensors need the 5 volt reference point to measure how their voltage is fluctuating you may be asking why don't we just use the 12 volts from the battery well the battery's not always 12 volts if it's a fully charged battery, you're going to have 12.6 volts. But as soon as you turn on the air conditioning, the radio, you start charging your phone, the voltage is going to drop and you're moving your reference point and now your circuits don't know where to start measure from. So you've got the solid 5 volts coming out of the uh, computer here. And that will uh, give you a nice reference point to measure everything off of. So now we know where to look. We've got the engine turned almost all the way on to the point just before the engine starts to turn over. So you kind of might hear a little bit of a hum from some of the electronics in here as it is. Uh, an open circuit would indicate that there's a, it's not connected. There's no continuity somewhere. Somewhere in there, something's broken and you've got an open circuit. So it's not five volts anymore, it's now zero volts or maybe something lower somewhere in between. So we've got a bare wire touching either another bare wire, touching uh, ground somewhere. Something's digging into it, something metal's digging into a wire and touching that and causing it to short out. And that current then goes to, the voltage goes to ground. And we got an open circuit. We gotta find that though. 
it's not necessarily one particular circuit or one particular sensor that's causing the issue so we got to go around and check everything and find out where we're at so from that we've got a voltmeter uh, you can usually get these for probably around 20 bucks online and really all you need to make sure is that it's got a uh, voltage DC setting uh, a continuity setting is nice as well but I don't think we'll be using that we'll be mainly looking at voltage DC and then for the probes I went and I got extra tips on them to make things a little easier this one is a uh, little clamp and then on this one I've got a uh, thin needle like probe on there and you'll see why we need that so now we got to figure out what we're going to be measuring the voltage on the multimeter I'm going to set the multimeter right there. We're going to set the black probe on ground. Uh, in this engine, we've got a lot of nice places to do it. You can use a bolt on the engine somewhere, but we've got a nice uh, engine hoist mount here where they'd grab on with the engine hoist to pull the engine out. So on this engine, they give us a place that's bolted right to the engine block. This is what's used to hook onto with an engine hoist to pull and set the engine. So in the assembly line, they'd have something and it would just drop the engine in and then unhook it from here. And there's another one on the other side of the engine. So we're just gonna bring our black probe in here and we're gonna clip right onto that. That gives us a nice path to ground right there. Now that we have the black probe connected to ground, we can use the red probe to find our five volt references. Uh, we're gonna be looking at sensors, at the incoming sensors. And one of the easiest ones that happens to be on our circuit is the EGR sensor right here. So we got to pop that off and then we'll look around in there. So now I have the multimeter set to volts DC. What you're seeing registering here is like two millivolts or one millivolt or something like that. So it's, it's very, very small. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with, remember with the ignition turned on just before the engine cranks, so all the electricity is on. We're going to start going through here. This is why we need that thin probe rather than the normal probe that comes with these. Is we can go That one's 11 volts, so that's probably the battery voltage right there. This one is 4.96, which is right in spec of where we want to be. That's probably it there. Let's see what the other ones are. That one's about 14.8 millivolts, so it's basically nothing. And that one's about the same. And this last one here, same, about 14 millivolts. So that second hole right there, we're going to go put it in the bottom there. And that'll be our 5 volt reference. So we're looking right at this one here. I'm going to put it in that bottom square with this thin probe. I can just kind of push it in and it stays right there. Alright, so now we know that this is 5 volts here. So now it's possible that this EGR sensor is actually bad here and we just unplugged it out of the circuit so we won't be able to see the issue. So what we need to do is pull this out, plug it back in, and check another sensor to make sure we're still seeing the 5 volts. So I'm going to go back here and find the 5 volt circuit here. And now I'm registering 4.9 on this sensor here. It's the third contact over here, and I'm getting 4.94 volts. So that's our 5 volt reference right there. So we know that the EGR sensor is not bad. But this is a little di more difficult to measure. So I'm going to plug this back in. And I'm going to go back to this one. I'm going to plug right back into there again. And I'm back to 4.9 volts. So the problem with this is that it's intermittent. So we can see we're registering 5 volts on there right now which is what the car wants, which is what the computer wants. So now we got to find how, how it's grounding itself out and that goes to zero. So we'll watch this while we start shaking other sensors and wires around and see if we can get it to drop to zero. Paying particular attention to, to sensors that are on this particular reference circuit. One of the uh, other codes we had gotten earlier was the camshaft sensor, which is down in here. So I'm going to go uh, take a look at that. So I'm moving the wire around for the camshaft sensor, and we're still seeing 4.96 volts. 
So now I'm going to follow that wire harness back. And it comes back here over by the alternator. All right, I think I've rooted out the problem. You can see here that we're at uh, five volts here. I think there's a maybe an O2 sensor or something back here. I'm gonna see if I can trigger it again. It's not very uh, reproducible. Just kind of got to get back there and fiddle around a bit. It's right under the distributor. There's a gray wire heading down to what I think is an O2 sensor. So I think it's on the exhaust. There we go. Did you see that? A big wire bundle as well. It goes right there. So it could be something in there. You can see the wire harness there under my thumb with the wire connector underneath it. And that gray wire is what I was moving around a lot. And that goes down to what I think is an O2 sensor. It kind of sounds like it might be the fuel pump. Maybe the fuel pump sensor. If that's the case, that's not something I can take care of myself. I have to take it to a mechanic. So maybe at this point you may have some idea of what's going on with the 0641 fault code. And uh, some ideas of how to troubleshoot. I think I'm going to button this up and uh, take it to my mechanic. Have him look it over. Uh, use much more sophisticated tools to diagnose the issue than what I have and see if he can figure out what's going on. Hopefully I can point him in the right direction and uh, trim off some troubleshooting money. Thanks for watching. Hope this helped.